Hey everybody, it's John and it is Dry Fire Monday and we are working to get ready for 2019 by keeping our Dry Fire game strong. And I realized something here not long ago that I haven't really done a good job of showing you guys the anatomy, physiology, and kinesiology behind the trigger press and how important that can be. And so, with today's video sponsored by the Mantis X, we really appreciate them, and I'm gonna show you how your body works and why I teach the trigger press that I do, and hopefully it'll help you get better as a shooter. There are live fire training tools and dry fire training tools. Mantis X is the only one that does both. It will change the way you shoot for the better. It has helped me immensely. So, of course, at its core, all you got to do with this guy when the time comes, you know, you, you draw a handgun, and we're talking, whether we're talking competition handgunning, defensive handgunning, marksmanship, you know, just going to the range and having fun. Uh, really, all you got to do is point the gun at the place where you want the bullet to go, press the trigger straight to the rear without disturbing where the gun is pointed, and the bullet will go where it goes. It's one of the things that I like about firearms, unless it's the gun itself is malfunctioning or the ammo is malfunctioning, which is kind of rare, the gun doesn't lie. It will go, the bullet will go where the gun is pointed when it goes off, but the key is getting it to do that. One of the most important ways to that, really two things that are most important, is how we grip the gun and how we press the trigger. We'll talk about gripping the gun in another video, we have some stuff to talk about there. But for now, let's talk about that trigger press. So we have a hold of the gun, right? We might have the gun in two hands like this, I'm gonna take a hand off it just so that you can see the trigger a little bit better. And ostensibly, you, you have, this is very simple, right? Click and you press straight back and the gun goes off and off it goes. And if I put it in the other hand so you can see, you know, the trigger finger here, you know, it goes like that, it goes boom and, and the gun goes bangity bangity bang and it, it does what it wants. And sometimes I go back to that Bruce Lee approach, you know, when he first started he said that a kick was just a kick and, and then he found out that a kick was much, much more than a kick. And, uh, and then as he continued to progress on after thousands and thousands of reps, he just realized a kick is just a kick. Now, I want to talk about that with you, okay? Because I think people misunderstand what Bruce Lee was saying there. Um, I think they say, oh, at the end of the day, it's all super simple and who cares? That's not what he was saying at all. I think what, what Bruce was talking about there is <clears throat> in the beginning, he, he, he didn't know what he didn't know and it was just simple to him. And then as he continued to study it, he saw all the nuances that were involved. And then after a while, he was able to put those nuances together and understand them so well that it returned to its simplicity in greater and deeper understanding. So my goal here today is to give you some significant greater and deeper understanding of how this works. Then we're going to actually use the Mantis X to quantify that and I'll show you how it goes. As an aside, do me a favor. Think about buying a Mantis X for somebody that you know that wants to be a better shooter for Christmas this year. Guys, they're offering free shipping. Hit the link. It's a pretty good deal. A fantastic tool. It'll be something that they can use all year long and think about you and, and what you gave them for Christmas and it will show them that you support the work that we do here at Active Self Protection in bringing you great content. So think about it. Great Christmas gift. So we got to start by thinking about the hand here, okay? And uh, this is going to have a little bit of, of heavy science content here. So, so we're going to talk about anatomy, physiology, and kinesiology. Warning, science ahead. First of all, I'm gonna, uh, we want to talk about the tendons that run down this finger because this finger is the only one we're really worried about right now, okay? So we, what we really want to do here is we want to worry about this, this particular finger. And the thing that we have to think about here is there are actually two tendons running down this. I'm going to put a little graphic up here for you where you can see you have two tendons here. You have a very long tendon that runs all the way down, all the way to the very tip of your finger, the flexor digitorum profundus. And it goes through all kinds of pulleys, five of them in fact, on the way through the hand, and the muscle that pulls that tendon is down here in your forearm. Talk about that later. You also have another one, another tendon, the flexor digitorum superficialis, that connects in this second one. And that one runs from the second all the way down here into the hand as well, into uh, uh, your muscles in your forearm. Now, the difference is it only runs through three pulleys. Now, the more pulleys that it runs through, and a pulley is a connection point, right? So all a tendon does connects a bone uh, to a muscle. And, and what that does is that the muscles here flex, and the more pulleys it has to go through, the more of a circular motion it's going to do because it's pulling through more pulleys. Fewer pulleys, less circular motion. So really what I want to do is I want to do my best to engage the flexor digitalis superficialis, which is shorter and goes through fewer pulleys, so it's a more straight back motion rather than the flexor digitorum profundus, which has more pulleys, therefore a more circular motion, which 
which is going to have a tendency to pull the gun offline. So what does that look like? Here's where it looks like in the end. Instead of doing this and, and using this finger here to kind of pull around, and you can see me doing that, what I'm trying to do here is get a little flat with that finger. Now, when I stick a gun in there and I do this, I'm gonna show you instead of this, which again is a rounded motion, what I wanna do instead is this and get a flatter motion. Now that's independent of where you wanna put the, the uh, trigger shoe on the pad of your finger. So some people say, you know, you really want the middle of the finger. Some folks really like to bury it inside that first digit. I don't care if I bury it inside that first digit like that and I flatten it out, it still does the same thing. I don't care from this perspective if I'm using the pad, which again, if I get the pad here and I press like that, no problem. If I press all the way through because I have big hands and I get the same pad, no problem. I'm really trying to get this. Here's an example in a way that I can show it to you as well. This is my flashlight. My Surefire EDC L2T has a uh, a uh, um, gas pedal on it. So, you know, low and high and those kind of things. So you can see it come on. Now, what I want to see here is, is again, I can press this way, right? And you can see how that is kind of pressing in and curling, or I can sit here and press straight down. But what that's going to do is here, it's kind of hard for you to see, but it kind of pulls off to the side. It's very hard for me to press straight down with this. It's possible, but it's more difficult. If I, if I get this here where I can put it in the center, and even if I put it on the center there, but I'm pressing straight down, it's much easier for me to do. Cleared firearm, right? You can see it's got a barrel block in it, just so that you can see what I'm going to do here. And what I want you to see is the difference. I'm gonna point this right here at your uh, at the, the uh, lens. And what I want you to see is just watch my front side. I don't care about the rest of anything. Just kind of watch the front side. As, as I'm gonna first pull with that flexor digitorum profundus. I'm gonna kind of curl the entire finger and I'm going to give it a good press. And you can see there's a little bit of jump there, but I'm trying real hard not to. Now, if I press to the straight rear instead, you notice that I didn't get that little jump. That's pretty significant when we're talking about shooting with any kind of accuracy. And it gets worse when you try to go fast. Okay, so I put my Mantis unit on here and I'm recording this, so I just wanna kinda of show you what this guy's going to do and kinda of feel a difference between you know trying to use that, that uh, um, two different tendons. If I get in here, and especially watch what happens when we get a little faster, but let's just go a little slow here. And again, I'm not worried about my grip so much right now. So if I'm, if I'm working on, what I'm trying to do here is curl a little bit and really work on curling it. And what that's gonna do, and, and I'm, you know, I'm a pretty good shooter. So you see that I got an 88.7 there. That's not too bad at all. And we're gonna hit another one there, 93.8, not bad at all. Okay, so that one a little bit lower, 76.5. I'm not trying to create problems. What I'm trying to do though is use that and press with that first one. That was a great shot, 96.8. Okay, so we get that there and we really press again, again, 86.6. We're not too bad. So again, doing this, I can get there, but it's harder to be consistent. Now I'm going to move and again, just do this. I'm just, what I'm really trying to do, and I've worked a lot of reps to try to do this, is to, to disconnect this front finger and to use that flexor digitorum superficialis and use that first one to, to press this. Now what that means when I'm pressing up like this is that my finger tends to look like this and I tend to like the middle of the pad, but again, I don't care. If you wanna go that way and go here, that's lovely. I'm just trying to press straight back. So now as we get here, we've got all that. Now let's kind of see how we're doing. Again, I'm not trying to do anything special. I'm just trying to press straight back. 96.1, great. Okay, 92.4, awesome. 83.9, went a little fast on that one. Yep, will happen still. Okay, 97.4. Okay, 95.5. Now, here's what I really want to do here. I want to take a look at these more than anything else. So I don't even care about the score so much. What I really want to see is you see how tight right here in, in number five. Let's go back to number one. What I really want to see is that... Um, uh, that yellow coming right in as the shot breaks, what's the barrel doing? Notice there on shot one, it is sitting right exactly where I want it. Once the shot is gone, it'll go left. It went left just a little bit for me. Same thing here, just a tiny bit of movement, but very close. That last one went up just a little bit, but again, it's straight back and forth, not side to side. That's very important. Fourth shot, excellent shot there, no movement at all. Fifth shot, no movement there at all. So you can see when I do this, 
and I really get that together here because I'm using the physiology, then I can get a better and more accurate trigger press. So there's your task today. Your task this week is to go back and think about your trigger press and really think, I'm trying to use, I'm trying to use this part of my finger to move things and, and leave this one slack. This one here, this, the, the very end of my digit is not doing the pressing. I'm not doing this and trying to engage these muscles. I'm trying to leave that loose and flat and use this one here to get that good trigger press like I want again and again and again and again, and that'll make me better as a shooter.